Good morning. Thank you for joining us one more day um, in this journey that we are on together for these 21 days. It is always a good thing that we begin this year in the presence of God, spending time with Him and uh, you know having God speak to us. The thing about starting the year with the Lord itself is, is a wonderful thing because obviously it will set the tone for our entire year that is ahead of us and uh, what He speaks into our lives um, right at the beginning of this year would help us to continue to be in hope, continue to pursue our dreams, continue to you know persevere through difficult seasons which may be ahead of us. Um, the promises of God are the ones that will keep us alive and keep us focused on uh, what is ahead of us. But most importantly, they help us to keep our eyes on Him, our Lord Himself, who is the source of all strength and all power and all love. And so I want to thank God that God gives us this privilege, um, gave us this privilege of coming together like this, using the technology uh, that we, you know, we have in our hands uh, to connect like this and to pray together, obviously to look forward to what God is speaking into our lives. We began this year by looking at Him, the source of our life and the source of our strength, uh, to receive a word from Him. And that's why we are calling it 21 Day uh, Prayer, uh, uh, pro Promise Prayers, uh, that we expect you to spend time in the presence of God before you join us uh, together online to receive the word. Uh, if your heart is not ready to receive, are uh, not at a place where you are willing to listen to anything that he says, you may not be able to hear. And that's why it's important that you do spend time uh, before you hear the voice of God. And if you did not, at least now after the, uh, after the word comes to you, spend time in reflecting on it and praying um, uh, with the Father, spending time in the presence of God. All right, so as we get ready to uh, receive this word, today's word, uh, would you take this time to um, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to focus on what God wants to speak to us, uh, speak to you. Ask Him to help your heart to get ready to receive His word. And while you do that, do take time uh, to uh, share your prayer requests. If you have any prayer requests, we'd love to pray with you towards the end. Um, we, uh, if, you, if you don't want to share it on public platform, you can uh, always share your prayer requests on the numbers that you, uh, you would see on the screen uh, you know, at some point during this journey. And then uh, we would pray uh, with you. Um, you know, at Capstone, we'd have our prayer warriors pray for you if you send us any prayer requests. All right. Also, take this time to share uh, uh, with others this video. If, you know, who knows, somebody might need to hear the voice of God today and they might need an encouragement, right? So just like how we all need. Uh, so take this time to pray right now and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Father, we thank you once again for this morning. It is uh, such a joy to come into your presence to pray together every day. It's a gift from you, God. Uh, not that we deserve it, but that you are a gracious God. And so we gladly receive this day. Give thanks to you. Yesterday was wonderful, God. You, each one of us, we have experienced in our own way your intervention in a very special way in our lives, in everything that we did. Thank you for the wisdom that you granted. Thank you for the doors that are opened. Thank you for the healing that we have received. Thank you, God, for the testimonies of people who have experienced a supernatural intervention in their lives. I want to praise you for choosing to listen to our voice, our prayers, uh, choosing to speak into our lives, choosing to uh, protect us, choosing to deliver us, 
uh, in all areas of our lives. We see your hand at work in a very specific way. So thank you God for, uh, for, for yesterday. And we now thank you God for today. Would you take control of our Holy Spirit? Or would you calm our thoughts down? May our hearts and our bodies be under your control. We are willing to receive from you, God. And would you speak to us? Thank you, Jesus, for speaking to us every day. And we expect you to do the same today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning, as we continue our uh, um, you know, study of the promises of God, that God uh, declares in, in, his, in his word to, to his people, uh, let's look at another passage from the scripture where we can receive a word from God. Now, as I, uh, if you've been following with us throughout this uh, last uh, 11 days and now the 12th day, um, you would realize that um, uh, you probably uh, heard me saying to you that the scripture has multiple promises, over 4,800 of them uh, given to us, given to every situation of our lives. So if, if, uh, if you're really a student of the scripture, as you sit down and medita meditate on the word of God, you would realize that there are so many areas of our lives that the promises of God cover Many of those promises are direct um, promises from the Lord, meaning He directly declared that I will be with you, I will protect you, I will walk with you, I will guide you. These are, you know, are declarative statements from the Lord Himself that you would actually hear the voice of God saying, this is what I'm going to do for you. Uh, but there are other places where the promises of God are expressed as a declaration from the man himself, where um, human beings, uh, through their experiences, uh, through their walk with God, when they are conversing with others, or in the form of a poem, in the form of a prayer, they are expressing the promises of God. God, you said this way, this is what you do for us, this is how you deal with us. So when you uh, uh, when you see some of those prayers or uh, songs, you would begin to realize that it's a declaration from the man himself to his God, reminding himself that this is the kind of God I have and this is what he does. Uh, so there are some promises in the scriptures that you would see as a declaration from the man uh, to one one another, to God, uh, proclaiming the faithfulness of God. And that's where you see um, indirect references towards the promises of God to man. And as we, uh, uh, it is one of those things that we're going to look at. In our journey, we have seen direct declarations from the Lord of the promises, His promises to us. And of course, we also saw some of them as songs and today we we'll look at one more song in Psalm 34. Psalm 34 is a beautiful beautiful psalm. Every one of us at some point in our lives would have said something like what the psalmist in Psalm 34 said to God and to his people. Uh, we may not have exactly uh, made a poetic sense that this David King David had actually had uh, but we probably said something like this in our own lives if we had experienced the goodness of God in a very special way. And David experienced a very special, special, special uh, experience, had a very special experience with the Lord. He was rescued from a very difficult situation which he put himself in. He made a mess of his own life as he got distracted by his enemies, as he got distracted by the fear, uh, instead of going to God, he ran away, uh, found himself in the middle of his worst enemies uh, at a place of death. And yet, even, even though it was David's mistake, 
even though it was david's hasty decision even though it was a decision that david made which at that time when he made the decision seemed logical david found himself in a place uh, of utter mess he looked to god and he said god would you just give me the wisdom and help me and god rescued him and that's what you read right in the beginning a uh, prescript of psalm 34 saying a psalm of david a uh, return regarding the time he pretended to be insane in front of abimelech who sent him away and that is a very interesting situation that david found himself in and of course we are not going to go there right now what i want to focus on is what he wrote after he got rescued let's look at this psalm i'll read from verses 1 onwards and then slowly as we move on i'll keep explaining uh, multiple things i will praise the lord at all times i will constantly speak his praises i will boast only in the lord let all who are helpless take heart come let us tell of the lord's greatness let us exalt his name together now as you can see the first three verses the uh, psalmist david is encouraging us to praise god come let us together uh over to worship our god to lift up his name to exalt his name to praise his name and you know the, basically it's a call to worship god it's a exhortation to worship god uh and of course he then goes on to give reasons as to why we need to come together and praise god and worship him um uh, verses 10 kind of puts the entire psalm into perspective for us so let's look at verses 10 and then go back and reroute ourselves uh, all through this psalm verses 10 says this even the strong young lion sometimes go hungry but those who trust in the lord will lack no good thing the reason is asking us to come together and praise the reason is calling us and challenging us to worship him is because he says even the young lions go hungry but those who trust in the lord will lack no good thing those who trust in the lord will lack no good thing keep that in your mind what he is saying is this that if i can trust god if we can trust god there will be uh, you know there will be no place in our lives where we would lack good things that means everything that happens in our lives would be good is what he said if you trust in the lord you will lack no good thing so what is this what what does it mean by lacking no good thing And I think that's what he set about in explaining an entire psalm, verses four onwards, all the way to the end. What David tried to do is to describe to us the kind of places we might find ourselves in, and the kind of people who really receive a good thing from the Lord. Uh, so, what kind of people he describes there, and that's what I want to list out today. For Uh, for our study together as we look at this entire psalm david lists out seven types of people who receive a favor from god seven type it's not limited to seven types but in the psalm itself you see seven types seven types of those people who lack no good thing in their lives and uh, what kind of good thing that they receive also he describes that So that's what I want to explain to you in the next um, 15 minutes. The first kind of people he talks about is those who are helpless, those who are downtrodden, those who are desperate. In other words, in verses two, um, he's saying, um, "I will, I will boast only in the Lord. Let all those who are helpless take heart. Let all those who are." helpless take heart um in another translation it says downtrodden those who are oppressed in other words those who feel like i got no source of help those who feel really 
You know, have you ever found yourself in a place of helplessness? There may be times when you really, I mean, there's no source of help to you. And you felt really helpless. And, I, you know, helplessness can push us to a place where we are, where we lose hope, where we are, uh, you know, uh, we don't know how to react, right? Like we feel paralyzed. We want to do something, but we are unable to do. We hope somebody will help us and we know nobody is helping us. And you feel so helpless. If you have a child who is growing sick day by day, um, you know, if, if, if your child grows day by day sick and you put the medicine, the best thing that you can do is take them to doctors and uh, or put them in the hospital and make sure all the medication is given and everything. And in spite of all the efforts of the doctors and all the medication in the best medication in the world, if your, if your child's body is deteriorating, the only thing that you can do at that point of time as a parent is become helpless. And so now he's talking to those kind of people who are helpless, who feel helpless this morning. He's saying those who are helpless will rejoice um, uh, as we look at that verse um, i will boast in the lord let all those who are helpless take heart and rejoice take heart and rejoice um what he encourage, is encouraging us to do this morning is that I, I know you may be feeling helpless this morning but uh be confident of this that god will change your situation in such a way that you will rejoice at what God is going to do uh, in your own personal lives. Helpless. Um, then the second category of people in verses 5, he talks about those who look to him for help. Now you are helpless. In your helpless state, generally we tend to go to all people we tend to find solution from other sources when we run around and trying to find help from other sources most of us realize that the help that we may receive may not be enough for us isn't it usually uh, it's not enough or it's that most people that we try to depend on turn their faces away from us and not really uh, are in a position to help us. Either because they are not in a position to help us or because they don't want to help us. Or because they don't feel it's worth to help us. We may find ourselves many times where we um, feel ashamed of the situation that we find ourselves in. We are trying to desperately get out of those situations and yet uh, you know, we are unable to find a source of help. Uh, so helplessness can lead us to a place of uh, darkness, a place of uh, uh, you know, feeling shame. Now he says, but those who look to him Instead of trying to panic and run around, if you can learn to look to him, then your face will be radiant with joy. When you are helpless and depressed, your face goes dark. You feel everything around is dark. Obviously, that's why you feel sad. But he says, if you can, instead of looking at somebody else, if you can look to him, if you can learn to look to God with all your problems, with everything, however silly it may look like for you, however difficult it may be looking like to you, impossible for you, if you can look to Him, you will never be put to shame. They will never put to be, uh, uh, put to be shame. Their faces will never be ashamed. Isn't that the word He uses? First of all, your face will light up. Second of all, you will never be shamed. If you look to him, most of us don't look to him. And that's one of the reasons why we live in shame. Instead of looking at other people to give you approvals, 
Maybe today choose to look to him and you will live with pride. Not the kind of pride that leads to destruction but the pride in him that you are accepted by him, you are chosen by him, you are taken care by him. Those who look to him, those who turn to him will be radiant with joy and no shame will befall on them. So don't worry about the shame that you are worried about. There may be some of you who are living in fear because you are worried that the thing that you have done or the thing that you are facing right now would bring big shame to you, big shame to your family. Would you take this moment to turn to him and ask him to help you? Those who look to him will be radiant with joy. That's a promise. You will never be put to shame. Then verses 7 talks about the third kind of people. Those who fear the Lord. Those who fear the Lord. Both in verses 7 and verses 9, he describes those who fear the Lord. For the angel of the Lord is a God. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Fear the Lord, you, his godly people, in verses 9. For those who fear him will have all they need. What he is trying to teach us is, instead of fearing something else, fear the Lord. You are fearing the worse. Because of sickness, because of a downturn in economy, because of the situation, marketplace situation where your investment may be looking like it's gone and thus leading to an unsecured future. You, you are worried about people who warned you that they will destroy your life, uh, you know, either threatened you physically or threatened you in other ways. The fear of others may be engulfing you and you, I am challenging you this morning just like David who learned that you should not fear of others but you should fear God when he chose to look to God and when he chose to fear the Lord he realized what God can do and that's why he's saying if you fear the Lord instead of fearing others then the angel of the Lord will encamp around you encircle you that's the word, right? Encircle you. In other words, he's saying, you are afraid of lack of protection because you are afraid of others. Afraid of what the sickness can do to your body. Afraid of what the lack of money can do to your children. Afraid of uh, what uh, you know, uh, the economical situation which may put your future in jeopardy. You are afraid, instead of all, uh, all those things, of uh, being afraid of all those things, why don't you fear the Lord? If you fear the Lord, what you are worried about from, you will be protected from them. Because the angel of the Lord encamps and you will lack nothing. So I pray and beg you today, turn away from that fear. Find your strength in the Lord. Ask Him. If you fear the Lord, be mindful of who your God is. Knowing who God is and pay attention to His voice. Then surely you will be protected. Those who trust, those who fear the Lord. Number 8, verses 8, talks about those who trust Him. Verses 8 and 10, of course we read the verses 10 also this morning. Verses 8 and 10 describe fourth kind of people, those who trust Him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in Him. Even the strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. When you trust the Lord, those who take refuge in Him means those who run to Him. Those who know our dependency only is on God. Not on what we earn, not on our job, not on what people promise to us, not on our investments, but God. 
when people learn to depend on God, then they lack nothing. Then they lack nothing. That's when you see how good God is. That's why Psalmist encourages O taste and say that the Lord is good. So taste and see that the Lord is good by trusting in Him. You will lack no good thing. Then he, as you move a little further into this psalm, verses 15, 17 and 19, he talks about another kind of people, verse fifth kind of people. He calls them righteous, those who are righteous. It simply, what does it mean by those who are righteous? It simply means those who do what is right in the sight of God. Remember that. Those who do what is right in the sight of God. Those who believe in what God says and obey whatever he is asking are considered righteous people. Scripture basically explains that to us all through. When you believe in the word of God and obey the word of God, then you are considered righteous in the sight of God. So when the psalmist uses the word righteous, that's what he's saying. If you trust the Lord and obey him, then you're considered righteous. Now if you're righteous, no matter what kind of situation you find yourself in, you will always be rescued. Always be rescued. Those who are righteous will have the eyes and the ears of the Lord upon them. That's what he says in verse 15. In verses 17 he says, Because the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous people and because of his ears at being attentive to the righteous people, the Lord hears their cries for help and rescues them. By the time when you come to verses 19, he says, Many are the afflictions of righteous person. A righteous man may find himself in many troubles, but the Lord rescues him from all of them. So no matter how many times you find yourself in a troublesome situation, the Lord will rescue you every single time. Those who are righteous and then verses 18 you would see sixth type of person and he says those who are broken hearted those who are broken hearted the Lord is talking to people who in their heart know that they are messed up and they are truly at a place of repentance. At the place where they are saying, God, uh, we see that we messed up and we like to reconcile with you. Those who are broken hearted. Those who know their state in, their, in the sight of their God. Many of us know how many times we messed up, isn't it? And that mess is, is really bad. But if we come to him with a true, sincere heart and say, God, really, we messed up and we don't know what to do. He sees the brokenness inside us. When he sees the brokenness inside us, Psalmist says, the Lord is close to those who are broken. His presence becomes more real, more tangible to a, tree, to, to a broken person. That means those who are broken, because they find themselves in the presence of God, they will be comforted. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. If you're broken today, 
And if you truly have a repentant heart, you can be assured that the Lord is close to you than ever before. And then of course the last one is those who serve him. In verses 22, as you come towards the end of this psalm, you see in verses 22 the psalmist talks about those who serve him. Those who serve him will be redeemed. No one who takes refuge in him will, be, will ever be condemned. Redeemed means no condemnation. No matter what you've done, when you go to him, ask him to forgive you, then choose to recommit your life and say, God, I serve you. Choose to serve you. Then no condemnation for those who serve him, for those who are in Christ. Obviously, when you repent for your sin, you are inviting Christ into your heart. And you belong to Christ. And as you belong to Christ, there is no more condemnation. That means God is not going to keep talking about the mess that you made. He is going to redeem you from that mess. Redeem you of that guilt. Redeem you in your heart. Redeem you in your mind or from your thoughts. Redeem you from that. Redemption means... What you lost because of your mess, because of your decision, because of whatever you have done. God takes you out of that debt and sets you free. That's redemption. So, if you are helpless, God will turn your helplessness into joy. If you learn to look to him, God guarantees there would be no shame in your life. If you fear him instead of others, you will be protected. If you trust him and depend on him, then you will lack nothing. If you choose to follow what he says, righteousness, then you will be rescued every time a trouble hits you. If you are broken in your heart, then you will receive forgiveness because God will comfort you. And if you choose to recommit your life and serve Him, you would see that God redeems you completely and sets you free. May we enjoy that freedom. May we receive that freedom with joy and experience His goodness in our lives today. Let's take this time to pray and recommit ourselves to our Lord. If there are any prayer requests and if you have put them here, we'd love to pray with you this morning and ask you to join us uh, as we pray. I know, I know we've cut the live and we got the second one and there may be some people who would have already put their prayer requests in the first part. I'd like to pray with them and um, I see a prayer request there and so I want to pray with them too uh, this morning um, for um, healing and for whatever you're looking for this morning. Thank you Jesus. Father, I want to thank you for your word. Thank you for those who joined us online. Um, we thank you for your goodness in our lives. Thank you for speaking to us, God. Your word is clear. Your word is always encouraging our hearts. And I pray that, God, that as people receive your word, may they be encouraged. I pray for those who are in need for the healing uh, pray that you stretch your hand and com bring complete healing. We pray for Priya who is suffering. We pray for Master Neil. We pray for others who are recovering from their sicknesses. That God, you would bring complete physical healing in their bodies. Restore them, God. Put faith in their heart that you are their healer. And that God, that our hearts would be 
um, you know, encouraged by your word. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for speaking to us. We look to you, God, for help. And we will know, we know that we'll never be put to shame. We commit this day to you and we pray that your word would be um, clear to us. And encourage our hearts throughout this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you for joining us today one more time. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 and receive the word again from the Lord. God bless you.